Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I will call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors workshop meeting for Saturday, March 20th, 2021 to order. The time is now 9.04 a.m. We are doing these meetings through Zoom because of COVID-19 and Governor Wolf's emergency declaration stay at home orders. We normally do the Pledge of Allegiance during in-person meetings, but due to the nature of the telepresence, we are going to omit that. I'll open up the floor to public comments at this time. Sue, did we have any calls or emails throughout the week? Uh, the only email was the one from Stonecroft. Okay, Thank we've added guys. that. We've added that as an agenda item. Yeah. Uh, so I know we do have a couple of members of the community on the call presently this morning. Uh, Dan or Kelly, I'm going to give it a few seconds where you'd be able to open up your mic and, and speak if you have any public comments. Okay, fantastic. This time we'll go into the items for discussion. The first item is a kind of reminder of the emergency declaration. We had made uh, this back in March at the Board of Supervisors meeting with a provision that it extend for a period of time lasting until further action by the board. This was signed on April 1st uh, by the chairman, myself. On February 19th, 2021, Governor Wolf extended the COVID-19 emergency order 90 days. And per our solicitor, uh, there's actually precedent pre-existing uh, wording that would allow us to potentially continue doing these meetings via telecom or teleconference telepresence until a time where we felt that the immediate danger and safety threat had passed around COVID-19. So at, at this time, I suggest we do what we have done in, in prior months and take no action on that as COVID is still very much a, a real concern. I agree. Okay. <clears throat> Moving into the next agenda item, it's the Stonecroft Homeowners Association. Uh, we were sent a, a letter I received it this morning and read through it rel relatively quickly, but it's a, a pretty basic ask. They have concerns around, there's a, a road that has been heavily used for construction traffic throughout the duration of Stonecroft's building. And when they go to finally pave it, the concern is that the under, the base and everything that, that is the supporting element of that road is not going to be in satisfactory shape. So. By all means, please read the letter for yourselves. It's about a page in length, but it boils down to they don't want to have it final paved and have it crumble after five years. This is a road that the, life, the estimated lifespan is supposed to be closer to 30. So what we should do and what we should consider as a board of supervisors should be to ask Mac Miss, uh, McCarthy Engineering to outline what actually goes into that inspection prior to the final pave as essentially a peace of mind to to assure them that they're not going to have something that looks very good on the outside, but then it's going to fall apart in short order. Um, beyond that, I think this falls very squarely into the normal inspection process. We obviously, whether it's a house with its craft inspecting it or road work or anything else with McCarthy in Engineering inspecting it, we don't want to have a product that looks good but fails from a functional test. This is part of the inspection to make sure that it's, it's well done, it's correctly done, and it's going to withstand the test of time. I have a quick uh, question slash comment sure. on that. Sure. The other part of that issue also is I just briefly read through the letter. The other part of that issue is, is what did landmark contract with um, Stonecroft? So if they contracted with them for a certain kind of paving, a certain method, et cetera, et cetera, unfortunately, they have to stick to the contract. Agreed. Agreed. But if if they are making the, the assessment, the assumption that they've put this base down 15 years ago and it's going to last another 30 from the time they do the top coat, that may be something that we have to revisit and say, hey, guys, you've made a you've made a, a, an error in logic on this one, because when McCarthy goes and inspects it, he goes, it's only going to last five years. It's only going to last 10 years because of the amount of wear and tear that's been put on it. Right. They'd but obviously. It, per, right, but, it, per, but is Jim held to the contract standard, though? That's that's the other part of the, the issue. So, um, yeah, I don't for what it's worth. I don't think McCarthy Engineering says like, no, nope, you you have to pave this a certain way on the top. If it's contractually agreed upon, that's that's what it is. The question at hand here is, are we putting are we, are we putting a, a top coat of paint on something that is falling apart? Right. Right. And I have confidence that Jim McCarthy uh, will definitely, you know, do it to the highest standard, but unfortunately he does still have to follow whatever contract guidelines are oh, in place. Completely right. agreed. Completely right. agreed. 
Yeah, Jim's the kind of guy that he's, I, you know, over the past year working with him, he's not the kind of guy who does things, excuse the expression, half-ass. Jim will definitely make sure it meets current standards because none of us want to have a problem that anyone has to go back in and pay for again down the road. We want it done right the first time. So I feel confident. I think it's just honestly giving Stone Group the reassurances that, that Jim will be there to do that. And I guess they want the okay to speak to Jim. Well, what yeah. I'd like to do, that yeah. my segue to that was rather than us deciding anything today, I think it's pretty basic, but I'll ask Jim to be on the call on Thursday night. Yeah. That way he's, he's there with us. Um, we'll extend the offer to be on the call with the information to anybody from Stonecroft, Stonecroft that would like to do it. And as a follow-up, depending on what Jim says, and I don't think this would be a problem, but just get something short in writing about what the actual final inspection process is. Offer the peace of mind that, yes, your concerns are valid. However, we're going to make sure to the letter of what is within our, our legal control and within the contract, like you had pointed out, to make sure that you don't have a bad product given to you. I agree. Thank you. Okay. Jim, do you have, as a, as a supervisor and Stonecroft resident, do you have anything that you'd like to add to that? No, I just I agree with the with with both of you that we want to make sure that the that that area is okay to be paved, and I'm relatively sure that Jim's going to do a great job. So, okay, fantastic. Yeah. Okay, next up on the agenda then is the PennDOT mowing contract. This is a three-year contract which expired December 31st of 2020. The total rate actually increased from the last time because it's a, a three-year agreement uh, from four thousand four hundred and eighty-nine dollars and fifty-nine cents, fifty-five cents, excuse me, to four thousand eight hundred and nine dollars and sixty-four cents. So it's pretty much the the same agreement, same measurements. It's just the rate actually went up over the past three years. So we will get more money than we usually do, not by a whole lot, but a little more money uh, for mowing those sections of uh, PennDOT roads. So. I'm not going to make a motion now, but we should certainly approve this on Thursday night because this is something that we're in the habit of doing and needs to be done, and we happen to get a little bit of a return on it for doing it. Yeah, there's a bunch of signatures that are needed, and it needs to go back and forth between them and us in a couple of times. And yep. It's a little process to get it done. Yep, but we'll, we'll get the ball rolling on that on, on Thursday night then, and then okay. I'll come over like Friday in the afternoon or something like that. Or if you leave it out on the desk, I can come over on the following Saturday to, to put whatever signature I need to put on it. Okay. Friday too, so I could probably stop down Friday, no problem. Okay. 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 Next is the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. Uh, we are waiting to hear if the dirt, gravel, and low volume road grant has been approved. If it has, we can move forward with getting that uh, out for bid and getting that work done. Right now we're in kind of a holding pattern on that until we hear. Next is the culvert on Sheridan Road. Uh, this is at Gerald Hoover's farm near 540 Sheridan Road. The hole is getting bigger. Uh, we've asked McCarthy Engineering to get us pricing for our road crew to replace the 12 foot by four foot uh, box culvert, including materials. I uh, have not seen that yet, but we should hopefully have that by Thursday. So again, we're in kind of a holding pattern on that one. And the road project 2021, um, we had a number of things that we had talked about last time. And I have one minor correction. I misread Charlie's notes on the thing. The section of Stouchburg Road that would need to be milled and overlaid is considerably shorter than 0.7 miles. It's only actually about 450 feet, which is still going to be expensive. It's going to be about rough estimate, I need to get firm numbers from Jim, about $35,000 to do it, but that's considerably less than the 288,000 that was for the, the 0.7 miles. Um, for the supervisors, if you are in the Google Drive and you go to the, under professional services, there's a road work or roadmaster. I think that's where I put it, give me a second. Yep, roadmaster road work. I have put up my working draft of a, a thing that I call the road binder. And that includes uh, some of the historical information that I could get around some of the, the projects like Hickory Road, as well as the stuff that we're going to be looking at doing in this phase of work. And ideally my outlined phase two for this year. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit and I'll, I'll actually share my screen in just a second. OK, 
Okay, let me zoom in so everybody can see that easily. So cool. This is so amazing. I hope when we go to in-person meetings, we could have something where... So <laughs> I've actually, that's one of the, the things that I have for comment is being able to do this. We're going to have to buy a couple of things and do a little bit of uplift on the meeting room space, but we absolutely could do this over over the internet so that it shows up on a stream, but also in real life that we'd have the, the ability to show it in large behind us. So I'll jump back to that in a second. But um, these are the roads. Apologies for the, the crude outlining on my part. That was my pen not behaving, but... Um, the roads from any of the roads that are highlighted in red would be the ones that are found in our bid packet. Uh, this actually, I don't know why this shifted over. It's probably just Google Drive versus Word documents, but uh, this mark is actually this little section of Stafford Road immediately to the left of it. Instead of that long section right there. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Actually, you can see my cursor. Okay, cool. Um, so considerably shorter distance based on the notes that we have and from looking at it, much like many of the other roads in our township could stand to be milled and repaved entirely. And it's it's a much shorter distance. So I'm gonna get a, an updated firm figure from McCarthy Engineering, but these, these are the roads that are in the packet that we have out for approval right now, these highlighted sections. Um, for everybody's consideration, I have made a table, an easy to read table based off of what is in Charlie's packet of distances and what the road to repair is, where it starts, where it stops. And if there's a note for like, for example, Idris is the entire street, that sort of thing. Um, total distance, we're looking at about 5.45 miles in that, in that work packet. So other than asking for a revision on the, the Stouchburg Road estimate for the milling to be put into the packet prior to it being put out to bid, I think we're in good space around the, the crack ceiling estimates that I had given were, were still spot on in terms of measurements, um, that we should get that approved Thursday night, barring any objections from either Irene or Jim, and get that out to bid a, a immediately. Okay, while we're on the subject of road work, if we scroll further down in the in the packet, this is what I'm proposing for phase two, getting pricing for phase two. And this is gonna be a lot easier to understand when I scroll down in just a second, but we're looking at trying to get a total of 7.6 miles of additional oil and chip done, um, which would be, let me actually zoom out just slightly. the roads highlighted in purple, which is Stouchburg Road, Richland Road, Sheridan Road, Scharf Road, Marion Drive, the two sections, and the bit of Stouchburg Road that becomes, I think, Kreider and Ketterman Hill. It's T-499 is the, the name that it has uniform across all the sections, as well as the section of Reichert that goes from Marion Drive to, to State Route 419. Irene, Jim, thoughts, comments, areas that you'd like to see? No, that's so cool. <laughs> okay. My my thought on this, and I'll actually scroll up, I haven't officially like marked things out, is we're essentially working in this, this lower third. So what I'm going to do once we finish this year, if we actually get everything in both packets done, is I'm going to basically divide this into kind of quarters, more more or less equal quarters, as much as I can for road distance, and then we're predominantly operating in these lower, like lower one to two quadrants. Next year, we just start in the upper right hand corner or the upper left hand corner, and then we start just going clockwise or counterclockwise around the township. Every year to two years, we do we do road remediation. Awesome. Right. Okay. And if you guys want to look at that or add notes or anything like that, it is out on the Google Drive in that directory. You, the nice thing about the Google Drive is you can you can make changes, you can make notes. I will see it. I will see that Irene left a note or Jim left a note or Sue left a note. Um, this is very much not a, a unilateral process on my part. I, I welcome input and, and insight if you say, hey, there's a road that I know is particularly beat up. Um, 
good example of that is I would love to do Sheridan from Main Street down to, uh, to the Southern Township line. However, that one, we're basically going to have to rip the whole road out. Like that's that's not going to be a, a, a resurfaced job. That's going to be, it has to be ripped out, regraded and repaved from start to finish. So that, that would be possibly like one, one year's worth of projects in its entirety. Even if we could get grants, that's going to be a tough one. That's like school road. Just by the cost factor, it is going to be an enormous endeavor to try to get that done. So. And just keep in mind, Peter, your, your two Marion um, drives, mm -hmm. you have culvert replacements on those roads. Yes. So I'd like to try to time that as much as we can, either with dirt and low volume road grants, or if we can if depending on how the 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 one that we were just talking about with um gerald hoover's farm and the other one if that one goes smoothly if we have no problems with the road crew doing that first one we have the road crew do the next one because mm -hmm. it's going to be substantially less expensive to have our guys do it than it is going to be to have to put it out to bid and and go that whole route the whole mm -hmm. prevailing wage and everything else mm -hmm. um so yes thank you very good call out but yes mention, you know before you go and yeah. We can re top a road. Yep. And the, other, the other the other thing is if we wanted to, even if we don't have them done, is much like we do with the bridges, we could have them do up to the point mm -hmm. where where the problem is going to be with the expectation that we're going to cut it out and do remedial work. So there'd be a little bit of an ugly patch, but it's going to be less ugly comparatively right. speaking than it is right now. Right. Um right. so there's there's a number of different ways that we can we can attack that, but very good point. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Um any other questions, comments, or concerns therein, Jim, Irene, Sue? Oh, thank you. Okay, fantastic. I'll send some of the notes over to, to Jim McCarthy and see if we can't get the, the stuff knit together, finalized for the first packet, get together for the second packet. If we can put both out at roughly the same time, that would be phenomenal. Um, I'm he, looking... he usually puts them on pen bid, and I think that yep. has to be advertised in the paper that it's on pen bid. But yes. He knows the ins and outs of that. I don't really know that. Yeah, no, you're right. You have to advertise it in the paper, but it's a lot of the other stuff for advertisement is done digitally through PenBit. Yeah. So there's a lot less fuss and muss yeah. for the other things that are involved in the process. Exactly. Um, also, it just occurred to me for the couple of people that are on the call, I did not actually hit enter. The chat has the public Google Drive directory in it for anybody that would like it. Um, so my apologies on the delay on that, but it is there now. Okay. Just on the road, Peter. Yes. If you could help me, well, myself and Dan, come up with a format so that we could track each of the projects with mm -hmm. the paperwork and, and anything else coming in. This way we could track it a little bit easier in the computer. Yep. So with that, I'll make a, a slight topic jump for a second. I will bring in the, the, the server that I had set up. I can get it working where Sue and you can access it under different usernames. Ideally, we still want to go to that domain sort of format so everything's centralized, but I'll get that in, get that installed. I'm going to have to run a, a network cable back into the office because all the equipment is over there. I'll just I'll zip tie it to things in the ceiling or something, but um, I'll have to run a, a line back so that you guys have connectivity to it, but we can start categorizing and, and classifying and organizing things. Um, here, like on, on my computer, I have a folder like for Hickory Road that has like the bid packet, the paperwork that we received for like statements of financial interests and uh, the inspection reports, the, the stuff that we got from Charlie Paris about it, um, all that stuff. So the goal here is to have all that stuff on the server and then the road binder is kind of the, the Rolodex that you'd have some key information, some overview, some notes, and then a link to go to that folder where you could see everything. Because there's a lot of times, like I know with Hickory Road, there's probably at least eight or nine files of multiple pages each for just that one specific project. So rather than having like a 3,000 page binder, we'll have that and then you can you can look up the, the source material if you need it. Yeah, for me, it, it's keeping track of the monies and making mm -hmm. sure that I've got the correct road, correct funds, and yes. it's all neat and clean so that when we get the audit, um, there's no issues with it. So, cause yep. I know all this material is going to go into the audit. So. Yep. Yeah. I was actually, I was thinking about that. I wanted to, less about the meeting. I can talk to you about it then, but when we okay. start doing the projects, yep. I wanted to set up kind of like we have with a code of accounts, like a code for the, the memo, if you will, of like, this one's a dirt and low volume gravel road. So it's always marked DVR or something like that. And this is like just a road crew project. So it's like RCP. 
and then start numbering these like we do with the ordinances like 2021-1, 21-2. Um, so we have the memo about what roads it is, but also what project it's tied to. Because yeah. it, speaking honestly, at some point when we get into enough of a discipline of this, um, we won't have too many side projects necessarily. They'll be consolidated into one big packet more than likely. But whether it's now or in the future, we are going to have things that are, are very organized in packets. And then we're going to have some one-off work, like doing potholes or something like that, um, that we could maybe track that cost very, very specifically and be able to pull it out of reports or during an audit very, very quickly and easily. Um, so I'll connect with you on that and, and brainstorm a little bit, but I think that would be an easy thing that we could standardize in the memo and it would make a life a lot easier for certain aspects going forward. And this way I could pull that information up. Yeah. Yep. So, like we, what we've been doing is getting things organized and so that down the road, anyone can reference it without having to hunt for something. So. Correct. Correct. The, the management system is what we're, we're kind of instituting right now. Once we have that in place, it's going to be a very well-oiled machine. Yep. It's already much, much better. Like, don't get me wrong. It's it's already a well-oiled machine as is based on what, like, you and Dan have been doing. But yeah. um, no, there's, there's always there. better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also in the topic of road work, uh, the next item on the agenda is the Berks County Cooperative Purchasing Council line painting. Uh, mileage estimates need to be returned no later than April 1st directly to A1 line striping. Uh, last year, we had submitted for 10 miles, but they canceled due to COVID. Um Sue has included a price list, and I will scroll to that in a second. Looks about like what it was last year. Double yellow yeah, center line, nine cents. Yeah. Um, okay, I will, once again, share my screen. Give me just a moment. It looks like the only one that went up is the double yellow center line. Yeah. Yeah, everything yeah. else seems pretty... Same. Oop. There we go. Went up a half a cent. <laughs> so, yeah, based on that, we should definitely go in guaranteed for the 10 miles that we were supposed to get last year, but they had to cancel. And I'm thinking we should actually maybe even go for 20 miles because I'm we have 34 miles of road total within the township um and just about all of it in one way shape or form could could stand to use a either a redo or a touch-up on the lines um irene jim do you feel 20 is appropriate or 20 is too high too low i have to be honest i couldn't say for sure i'm not i don't even know all the roads in the <laughs> so i'm gonna have to defer to your opinion yeah I, I would say the 20. So I'll have to look at the list of the 10 that we had from last year and draw around that for where we want to do lines. I had picked out a lot of the, the roads that were so well worn that you couldn't see the lines there at all or areas that were like around turns where a lot of the just the tire traffic had worn the lines off and things like that. Um, but I'm sure there's plenty of other places where we could do lines. Um, one of the ones, and I, I need to, I need to see what the legality on this and that I was going to bring up is Main Street. Striping down Main Street and doing the outside, the white lane areas on Main Street to, to make it visually more narrow. That I don't think we have to do any kind of extra studies or, or pass anything by ordinance because it is a, a roadway and the roadway is theoretically a prescribed width by standard. Um, the other thing is I got to see if A1 line painting would do this, but crosswalks, if, if while we're doing that, the crosswalks are technically already there as well, but painting the lines in, because I think just, again, from a visual thing, it's going to help unintentional speeders from going too fast. You're always going to have those people that are intentionally doing that and just being, uh, being dangerous, I guess is the, the most polite word that I can put on that. But um, having the, the lines painted on Main Street might help us. It might be a big benefit for a low cost in that respect. So being that is what that is, I will make a note for 20 miles. Draw out 
And uh, Sue, last year when we said 20 miles, did we have to give them the full breakdown of where we wanted painted no, or just the just, estimate? You just need to give them the mileage total. At, like crosswalks is on their sheet. So mm -hmm. you just, just have to let them oh, yeah, know um, how many. Okay, cool. Um, and then when the time comes um, at some point, I need to give them a list and a map. I know the drivers last two years ago wanted a map uh, with the roads highlighted. Uh, yeah, I can I can um, do that. Because I they're can... not from the area, so they have no idea where these roads are. Yeah, I'll do roughly what you saw in the binder there, that I'll put a, a list of like what roads to line estimated distance and then i'll do the highlighted map of like mm -hmm. here's all the things where we want the uh double yellow mm -hmm. center line and the white single edge line here's all the roads that we want to have crosswalks on and then i can do like an exploded mm -hmm. diagram of like here's main street here's where we want crosswalks mm -hmm. um that but I, what I can they, but what they want right now is just a the, mileage okay I'm thinking, they just i guess they just want to know how much paint to order oh yeah 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 i'm thinking we can certainly we could certainly do 20 20 miles worth of road like that's you could maybe get them to if you're going to do main street get them to go all the way out to the y oh yeah yeah, um, yeah. Is that's such a hard to see there yeah i i'm i'm all for it i'm going to make a make a note to include main street i know the a couple of years ago there was discussion about whether pendot does that or we do that um and i had a few phone calls back and forth with pendot and they are claiming that is our responsibility so every time this comes up, because this has come up a few times prior to me being a supervisor and during me being a supervisor, that there's always unilaterally finger pointing of, mm -hmm. no, it's not us. No, it's mm -hmm. not us. No, it's not us. At this point, I don't think anybody's going to give us grief about painting the lines on it, even if it is PennDOT. I, I, I don't they, think PennDOT would care if we paint lines. Yeah. So, I mean, th there might be some, if it actually turned out to be PennDOT, if we like repaid that, there might be a little bit of a... A backlash to that, but line painting, I don't think they're going to care. Mm -hmm. So I, I, at this point, Jim, Irene, unless you have a counterpoint or counter opinion on it, I say we just paint it and hope for the best. Agreed. Okay, so I made a note on the on the agenda, Sue, to include that when I when I go to notate that up. Okay, so that needs a motion whether you want to do it today or Thursday is up to you. Yeah, let's do it Thursday. So um, they need it by um, they need it by April first. So we're kind of close. Uh, okay, so let's let's do that today, just for the, the sake of timing. I try to Pete, Peter. Yes, yeah, sir. I have a question. Certainly. Is there any conflict between painting the lines and doing oil and chip on certain roads and streets? Those lines go down first, and then you do the paint or the chip and oil. All you're doing is covering them back up. So we would not be doing the lines before the oil and chip? on any of the roads there. I think there's maybe two, if memory serves me right off the top of my head. But a lot of the lines that we had picked the previous year were not ones that were going to be subject to the oil and chip work. Okay. Um, that that was separate and elsewhere. But um, depending on... Because you're talking uh, about Main Street as well. Yes, and we're not uh, we're not going to be paving Main Street because we have some concerns of having to re dig up and redo that for certain other reasons in the near future potentially. Yep. Um, along with a couple of other roads that are in dire need of repair. I know Jim, you've talked about Canal several times, and I would personally love to redo Canal, but I'd hate to do something, fix it, and have it real nice, only to have to dig it up and have patches on it again in three to five years. So uh, with that said, good, good call out, Dan, but I will be making very sure that we don't put nice new lines down and then slap Not asphalt enough. on top of them. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll make sure that everything is overlaid nicely. One of the nice things about computers is I can do, I have to steal my wife's computer to do this, but Photoshop does things in layers so I can actually essentially just layer stuff on to make sure I don't have any overlaps. Okay. Next up on the agenda is the Conrad White. Oh me, yes, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Sue. Sorry, okay. I got ahead, got okay. ahead of myself. Um, okay. I'll make a motion to authorize Berks County Cooperative Purchasing Council line painting for 20 miles, including single yellow, uh, 
or excuse me, double yellow, single, uh, single yellow, single white outside edge, and crosswalks for 2021. Thank you. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Now, next up on the agenda is the Conrad Weiser Youth Baseball. Uh, we did receive a letter from Mr. Giffing. They would like to use our field this year. Uh, he sent us an email uh, requesting that. I believe it's in the Google Drive as well. And I know we had talked about this before, and I should probably stop sharing the thing there so we can go back to normal. Um, I believe that is either in the packet or in the Google Drive. We had just gotten that yesterday afternoon. Okay. So it's I definitely. Think I emailed that to you separately. Yeah, it's definitely in the Google Drive then. Yeah. Um, and I had originally left a message for him saying our playground's closed. We don't know when it's reopening, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. You know, and then I get this call back, this voicemail back saying, oh, yeah, well, when is your field? Um, so. Yeah, I would I would say we, we send another polite letter or call saying that we, you know, we really appreciate the interest. We look forward to having the Conrad Weiser Little League there in the future. But unfortunately, the, the park, including the baseball field, is closed right now due to, to health concerns around COVID. I could just add a quick comment on that. CDC guidelines have not changed with respect to outdoor gathering because we can't and assure that people are going to maintain the six feet distance. Even if, if you want to kind of go with the conversation of people discussing a three foot distance, just because we can't assure that people are going to maintain that, I would hesitate to encourage any sort of outdoor gathering because there could be a lot of people there with parents, et cetera. So again, just to reiterate, I would not want to be one of these uh, places where we um, would be the source, so. Agreed. Hopefully that day will come soon when we can start having this sort of thing again, but we're not, we're not there yet. Yeah. Okay. So I will call him and let him know. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Aikens accounting audit. They are still working on a few things. Uh, Irene, do you have any other updates or things to add? Yeah, actually, um, we have sent over whatever materials they requested. It's kind of been silent, unless, uh, Sue, so you got anything else this week from them. No, so, not this week. Um, wonderful group to work with, very different experience from RKL, and uh, they're going to help us uh, tweak a couple of things. They um, stated that they're, help, they're available if we have any questions that's included in their package. So um, once everything is, they give us the final feedback, I'm going to ask to kind of good instructions over what we can do to make things a little bit better for the next year and uh, see what kind of bugs I could work out of the system and, and if there's any uh, deficiencies over what we've done. So very different experience from prior auditors. So good. Yeah. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the website. Uh, we had the training session and it was recorded through Zoom. The recording has been shared with uh, Jim and Irene who were unfortunately unable to be in attendance at that, that point in time. And uh, we're just waiting for the administrator accounts to get set up so that we can go in and start messing around with stuff, uploading additional documents, adding things to the calendar, changing certain things. I have a, a couple of things that I, I want them to tweak a little bit from a visual and interaction standpoint, um, but otherwise it looks very nice and seems to work quite well during the demonstration. I don't know if either of you have gotten a chance to, to watch that recording yet, but I think we're gonna be in a, a very good space very soon on that once we have the, the accounts set up and then we can start setting things up for like the, the community association or the fire company and in, in subsections where they can kind of self-administrate and add things if they want on their own for dates for fundraisers or events or uh, this, that, or the other thing, but uh, we'll have a, a nice central point for the community to, to look at stuff online. We can also link uh, the YouTube channel directly to that where people could watch the stream as we're doing it or uh, watch the videos after the fact that we have uploaded. Okay, next up on the agenda is the noise ordinance proposal. Uh, Irene had sent this out via email. Um, I did read through it. Uh, Jim, did you get a chance to read through Irene's proposed noise ordinance? Yes, sir. Good. 
I think it's it's perfectly fine. All the the wording that you changed really kind of addressed any of the points, uh, specifically the one that I had a concern around because we are in an agricultural community, both people that do it for like their their vocation, as well as people that just happen to have livestock in the area. That um, the exem exemption number I, the noise generated from agricultural production activities, uh, that covers any of the concerns that I had. Everything else is very straightforward, self-explanatory. You shouldn't be setting off fireworks or shooting a gun after like 10 p.m. You shouldn't be making a lot of noise that's going to disturb the, the health and, and sanity of, of your neighbors. Um, the one thing that I did want to ask, though, doesn't our trash pickup start at 5.30 in the morning, like 5 or 5.30? Yeah, supposed so, to. Yeah, so... Potentially one, can, yeah. Except, right, there's an exception for that as well. So I believe it was like in the first part. I mean, that's something that is expected. I think that has to do with the conduction of business. So I think there's the exception that's in there. Authorized warning, siren, bell, chime, construction activities, lawn care, engine of motor vehicle, noise generated by community sponsored event, emergency backup. Um, I didn't see any exemptions. I did see under specific acts uh, constituting a noise disturbance. Number eight was loading, unloading, opening, closing, or other handling of boxes, crates, containers, building materials, trash dumpsters, garbage cans, or similar objects. Um, that, unless I'm missing it, we might want to add an exemption in there just about if, like anything that constitutes official township business, such as trash and recycling collection. Other than that, I think it's it's great. Very, very good. Very well done job on your part, Irene. Thank you. Yeah, if, I mean, if there's any future noise ordinances, I'd be more than, uh, me, if there's any future ordinances, I'd be more than happy to take a crack at it. This way, we could kind of get uh, half the work done and, and it just goes over to Andy for review. Maybe it's a little bit of a cost savings on our part. That's honestly why I was interested in doing that, aside from the uh, neighbor that approached me even before I was a supervisor. So, um, I enjoy doing that kind of work. So uh, the other things that I added in is is the part of it to re require only um, if there's two separate people in two different residents or two different properties uh, that complains about it, that would constitute a disturbance. And as well as a police officer witnessing it, that would, those are really the other basic changes except for switching around some words. I think you put in something that I had as a typo. Yes, yeah, I found yeah. two two real small small typos but yeah. um i just i put comments in sure which they should show up on the, the right hand side when you shared but i removed you had as in a section that it just dramatically yeah. yeah um and then you had um with the township limits rather than within just the okay. simple stuff the actual the heart and soul of the document is quite good okay. um so with that said, other than adding the exception in there, because like you have something in there for like a, a officially approved like celebrations and things like that, but just the line that like official township activity is precluded from from being a part of this. Um, and that would also exempt uh, anything like the car show, things like that. Yes. Yep. So yeah. So that line of official township activity. Yep. I think otherwise it's spot on. That's great. Jim, do you have any thoughts? Very well done, Irene. You did a well, beautiful you. job. Hey, yeah, I went to school for something, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and it, down the road, if there's another ordinance for something in particular, I could try, like I said, do crack at it. And I think that would save us uh, some money, hopefully, with when it comes to Andy. Most certainly, most yeah. certainly. Okay, if we don't have any further on that. Um, I'd say let's discuss it kind of as the final point. If you can add that that little bit of wording in there for Thursday night, we'll go over it again. And theoretically, we'll I think we have to we have to advertise that before we officially adopt it. But we'll we'll start the wheels in motion on Thursday night for that. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Marion Fire Company waiver request. Uh, they requested a waiver of building permit fees. Craft Code Services has waived all fees except for the mandatory UCC fee of $4.50. The township took a $50 applications fee. So uh, we would need a, a motion to either grant or deny their waiver request. Um, prior conversation that we had on the subject, uh, we had gotten to the point where anything that is um, in surplus of a cost, an actual tangible cost, 
or uh, where Kraft was willing to waive all the fees that we would have no problem waiving the townships component of it. Um, Jim and Irene, do you feel the same way still? I, I, will, I would like to approve that. Okay. Uh, would you like to make that a motion? No. <laughs> 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 okay, no, that's fine. Uh, in that case, I'll make a motion to uh, grant the waiver request for the townships components of the building permit fees for the Marion Fire Company. Second. Second. Oh, rock, paper, scissors, guys. Oh, no. Look at Tyreen. <laughs> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Tyreen. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. No worries. Uh, next item on the agenda is building maintenance. Uh, we had a window above the garage actually fall out in one of the windstorms. I, I went out and I patched it up as best I could using some like uh, plastic sheeting, uh, cardboard, and duct tape. Um, simply because if I tried to put anything more substantial to that window, I think the entirety of the window would fall out. Um, so. What I'd like to do is get an estimate to replace both those windows that are above the garage. Yes, there's other windows that are also in need of repair in the building, and I'll, I'll come to that in a second, but those are those are so degraded that if we don't do something with them quick, we're going to have open holes to the outside world. Um, so barring any ob objections from the two of you, I'd like to get uh, Mike Rail, who uh, has the, the estimate out for the windows in the office that we're just waiting on the windows to come in back out to get us uh, an estimate on replacing those, which I believe, Sue, you actually said he was out to look at the one. He looked at them yesterday. Okay. Um, I'd like to also then get him back out to, to give us an estimate for the windows in the meeting room, that if we're having him do some windows all at the same time, it would obviously be a little less expensive for him to order like six windows rather than two or eight windows or 10 windows or whatever, and then do the, the labor kind of all at once. Um, the meeting room, I think, is probably going to be our most used space, in addition to the office, obviously. Um, and a lot of the other windows, while not in great shape, are at least keeping the weather out right now, other than those two that are above the garage. Well, even if we can, even if you could caulk on the outside of the room that's rented by AA, mm -hmm. we get little rivers in there, too, when it rains. So, but at least caulking would prevent some of that. But the problem is some of the um, the glazing the glazing around the windows is just gone. Yeah, know? I mean we could we could certainly reglaze. That's a really time intensive process. I'd be curious, and Sue, so I'll connect with you offline about this to get kind of multiple chambered estimates. How much is it going to be to do the garage windows? How much is it going to be to do mm -hmm. the meeting room? Mm -hmm. How much is it going to be to do the AA meeting room? Mm -hmm. And then kind of another one of okay, what if we do all of them at once? Mm -hmm. Um. Because if we have we have a budget for building maintenance, and while we still have some sections of soffit and like the front door and, and things like that that we need to do, the critical parts of the roof with the soffits and the gutters that was resulting in damage to the building has been done. The other right. stuff should be done, but right. it's it's not a, a clear and present danger to the, the integrity of the building. Right. Whereas the the windows are are starting to result in water damage in mm -hmm. places or in the garage, you have you have a high likelihood of things like birds and things getting in. Mm -hmm. Um so Jim, Irene, are you okay with that plan? Trying to, to see how, how big of a, a project this would be to see if it's within budget to replace a lot of the windows on the first floor? Definitely. Okay. Um so you may, give you you may want to uh do that whole lower row because the records room is also very bad. Yes. Yeah. And I, that's, that's actually a very good point. I was kind of mentally lumping that in, but like that entire face, that's like right right there. Well, yeah, I consider um, that the file room and the AA room one yeah. room because it was years ago. <laughs> yep. That whole, that whole first floor yeah. face, we yeah. should just look and see how much it would be to replace the windows. Um, it, yes, it's going to be a cost, but it's, it's certainly, it's certainly going to be needed. Um, I mean, as, that'll help with the heat, too. Because, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, Sue, I'll give you a call probably not after the meeting so that you have a little bit of a, a Saturday that you can enjoy. But uh, I'll, I'll give you a call or shoot you an email for, for Monday on kind of what my thoughts are, and then we can get Mike engaged for, for quotes. Okay. Um, based on the cost that's going to be associated with that, we should probably get a couple of estimates from a couple mm -hmm. other places, just like we did for the office windows. Mm -hmm. um, I would say maybe give the same groups of people that you called the last time for the office windows a call 
and uh, give them more or less the email that I'm going to send of like, this is what we're looking to do. And this is what we want to see in terms of a, a quote. We want to see the quote four different ways, just this, just this, just this, and all together. And I think we may get more of a response from some of the people if we actually have, if we actually tell them, this is what we want done. Yes. Um, that was part of the issue. Yeah. I, I mean, sometimes being a little wishy-washy is avoidable. Sometimes it's not. Um, I, I know, but I, I explained don't... all, I told the same story to all of them and said, you know, we're not carpenters, our mm -hmm. supervisors are not carpenters, you know, we don't know what is involved in replacing windows. Yeah, well, it's like the when we did the gutters and the soffit, like I can, I typed up what I, I knew we had to do, but there's, there was always stuff that was different between them for what, like Troy did, or right. spec versus somebody else, right. that it's even when you give everybody the same diagram a lot of times the answers are a little just a little bit different right um so i'll get that together and try to have it be as comprehensive as possible in terms of like we know what kind of windows we're putting in the office the goal then would be to have matching ones mm -hmm. around the, the remainder of the building um right so we'll get that kicked off and started but i think that would be something good to do um we should also maybe not write the second but look at the stuff we want to do for the the entry door because that's that's getting, that's a that's, that's really a bad. yeah that's really that's bad. a ticking time bomb that's mm -hmm. going to be that's going to be a, a, a gaping hole into the front of the building if we don't do something about it and i'd say in the next six to eight months mm -hmm. um so let's get some i'll i'll come out with a measuring table get some measurements we'll we'll put things out to people if we want to have roughly this opening and we want to have a, a good nice looking secure door for the building mm -hmm. Okay. Next up is the PSATS virtual conference workshop pass. Uh, PSATS canceled their convention, but will be offering the workshops virtually. The cost is $99. Sue would like to attend the virtual meetings. I'll make a motion to allow Sue to attend the PSATS uh, virtual conference for a cost of $99. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. You're welcome, Sue. Okay. Last item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, we had received a letter back from DEP in response to our memo um, with a less than desired response. Uh, however, we have kind of a, a thought and path forward. We talked with Jim McCarthy at the last meeting on, on how best to kind of approach this. Uh, we should be looking at getting an income study done and sending out the letter to property owners about the, the mandatory pump out ordinance and all mm -hmm. that. Um, and Jim McCarthy feels that uh, once we have some information in place around the general ability to fund within the community and the general state of what our systems are based on area one and area two, or area one and most of area two of the pump out, coupled with uh, any EDU availability calculations that Wollmelsdorf has that would put us in a much better space to make the, the the requests for revision that we are making in the plan because we'd have good solid documented science to stand on on we can't afford this the systems are either bad or not bad and Wollmelsdorf is or isn't going to have capacity to even execute the plan that we have submitted so I think for the time being we need to continue to think on this try to insulate ourselves and prevent a, a a railroad from happening but get some of that information and while the income studies i think are only good for one to two years it would be a good good cost from us to get that information and not rely solely on the census data absolutely okay i will i, I fully intended to set something up with alan over the past couple of weeks but my my work schedule has been nightmarish to put it lightly um so i will try to shoot alan a, a call or an email or both sometime early this week to see if we can get a, a quick call together to go over the letter and then as soon as he has that in place i think everything else in the letter is ready to go okay. we can get his blessing on that or make any changes that he wants to make about the the on lot mandatory management ordinance and start getting that stuck in envelopes and mailed out can we also have someplace, um, John and I were trying to hang up that other um, cork board so that we could, Dan and I could use that to track information. Um, can we also get uh, 
timetable that we have to start following to make sure that we're compliant, you know, if there's anything that we could do on our ends of things, so. Yep, so the, the enforcement of the ordinance is, I don't want to say at our discretion, but it is kind of at the purview of the supervisors. Mm -hmm. um, based on kind of the delay in getting information out, I don't know if we should be super draconian about no. like hitting people over the head with like, oh, you missed the year mark. But if we have people that exceed like the end of the year that they should have pumped out last year or whatever, um, we'll kind of slide the scale a little bit and then start getting in contact with people or having Alan get in contact with people with, hey, you need to do this. Please set something up in the next couple of months. Um, again, much like with the property maintenance ordinance and everything else, this is meant to better the community, not not be a club that we beat people over the head with. Right. No, absolutely. I meant everything that's also included along with Act 537. Just yes. To make sure that, like, I, again, I need a visual. I need something to, to kind mm -hmm. of cue me in and remind me of things. Yep. Um, I think I'm almost positive there's a full copy of the Act 537 out on the, the Google Drive. If There's a timetable on that, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's more than a little bit of light reading out there. There's, I think... It is on the old website, too. That is one of the things that's accurate. On the yeah. Old well, out on the Google Drive, I have the plan we submitted, all the the appendixes separated for, like, the maps and stuff like that for easy understanding about, like, what, what it actually kind of translates to from a visual standpoint. Um, the original Act 537 of 1965, if you want to actually read the Act. Um, so, yes, the plan is actually out on the old website, but if you go out on the Google Drive, there's, like, everything you could want like the full version the maps as a separate um the, the 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 plan as it exists now in two volumes because of all the comments and everything like that that comprehensively everything is out there for the public to see at any time and supervisors can see at any time as well okay if we don't have anything else on that one that is the last item for agenda so we'll move into the the supervisor's comments. I have a couple. Uh, the first one is a reminder that the state revenue department has announced that the PA state income tax filing deadline has been moved from April 15th to May 17th to match the IRS dates. Um, we've already gone over the road work binder, which was one of the things that I had in there. The other thing is the salt shed pole bill, uh, excuse me, pole building. Uh, there is a dr drawing out in the directory and I'll actually pull that up and share that so you guys can see it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this is roughly what I'm I'm thinking. Our our current garage <laughs> is roughly within this red square. Though I should say the current salt shed. What I would like to see us get pricing on to do is to put a one of those those hooped salt sheds that we had gotten prices on that seem to be pretty inexpensive, or a couple of them, depending on what the price point is. Shop around, get some some competing estimates. Relocate the salt shed towards the rear of the property, and our property line is kind of where that that tree line ends. So we should be well outside of what the required setback is for the rear of the property or the sideline of the property, but shift the use of salt and cinder into that new shed and either use the existing garage for the trucks or for additional space for the trucks for the time being with the ultimate goal of removing it and putting in a, a simple kind of pole building um, where we could actually have a proper garage, suitable space to store and maintain the vehicles, whether it's the big truck, the little truck, the John Deere, the greater. Um, obviously don't have to, to take this all in one shot. This is something that we can lay out and do over the next couple of years. But I think this is something that we should march towards so that we have more usable building space in the interior for things like maybe renovating the garage into office space. Peter, if you could, when the weather's a lot warmer, come out with me or just mark the property lines. Yeah. Um, give me, I'd, I'd rather do it with you. Um, spray paint where you'd like these things so this way I could have dimensions and Jim if you'd like to we could go shopping and start hitting up places and getting estimates this way we have some good concrete information which also express interest in coming with with me too so and I'd like everyone's input if anyone else 
Um, Sue, if your husband would like to come this way, we could uh, get the more feedback, the better. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So all I, I need you to do is just go out and spray paint the, the boundaries and uh, this way we could figure out what we can do with what the space we have. Okay. So the rear part is pretty much unused. It's just open space right now. Mm -hmm. We can get some those little fiberglass sticks and some like caution tape or something like that, measure it and just stake yeah. where we want stuff to go. Um, so I'll get salt shed measurements. And one of these days when it's not really cold or windy, we can go out and, and do that on a weekend. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay. I think I'd mentioned to you we can use some liquid fuels money money for the uh, soul shed. Yes. Yeah, and that's depending on where we we sit with road work, using that for the road work. Yep. That might be an, a, a good use of that because um, I think the the salt the buildings we were looking at with the the hoop tops. We don't need anything fancy for the snow. We just need, or the snow removal stuff. We just need to keep mm -hmm. water out of it. Mm -hmm. um, they were like $10,000, not even mm -hmm. for what we were looking at. So even if we were looking at two or three of these, it's still not a huge, mm -hmm. huge expense in the grand scheme of things. Yes, mm -hmm. it's it's money, but the we've run into problems with that shed and storage, the overall capacity isn't necessarily what we want. Mm -hmm. And piling up rock salt against the wood on the inside of there there's some spots where it's it's not so great because of the just the, the corrosive aspects of the salt um next thing that i had on the agenda and let me make sure i uploaded this yes i did okay let me slide this over and i'll share this one as well the meeting room there are some things okay. that we can do relatively inexpensively to improve the overall level of the meeting and the ability to broadcast the meeting once we're back in the building. One of the big things and kind of where I started and radiated outwards is we don't have a good microphone system. So even in person, there have been times where people have difficulty hearing us if they're sitting in the back. Um, and it would make recording the meetings like we do right now nigh on impossible if we don't have microphones. So I shopped around and I found a good microphone, uh, a pickup, and eight wireless mics for not a whole lot of money. I think it was about 250 bucks. Um, where it would be eight gooseneck mics, wireless, that we would be able to sit on the table and move around. Uh, or have one out where the audience could use either on a podium or sub that out for a handheld like karaoke style mic. Um, We'd also then need to get a, an amplifier. Again, not awfully expensive. I'll have to get pricing for that. And we can put some speakers in the ceiling strategically placed around the room so that people in the back can hear just as well as people in the front. Um, while we're on that, the best way to control all this would be to go through a little computer. It doesn't need to be anything crazy or, or outlandish uh, where we could do the recording for Zoom as well as to push it out to the YouTube stream. Um, because we're using a computer then, we'd have cameras we can do one or two cameras in a zoom session we could have one for us one for the audience and there's a couple of different ways that you can approach that you can have it picture in picture you can manually toggle back and forth if somebody has for a public comment i'll work out the the kind of nuts and bolts around that but we can have a very good interactive experience very easily with not a, a huge amount of cost and i actually found a company selling uh secondhand um uh, they're called ultra short throw projectors they're a projector that rather than sitting on like the far side of the room and projecting the picture out big, they're typically what are used in like educational capacities, high schools, colleges, where it's mounted to the ceiling and it's fairly close to the wall and it projects the picture at a, a pretty steep angle. So we could get one or two of these and have it project in large on that area that's the blackboard behind us, where we could do things like share maps or diagrams or um, have an agenda on the wall behind us. Um, the pricing that I had gotten for that was about 75 bucks per projector, which is nothing for that kind of piece of equipment. I know buying a simple desktop monitor is between a hundred to $200 now. So I'll get some stuff knit together, but the goal would be to have the meeting space where people in the meeting space are going to be a, a lot more, um, engaged that they're going to be able to hear us and see us better as well as anybody who can't make out, make it out to the meeting that night. Um, 
the, the other thing that kind of I, I've built this upon is I would still like to put drop ceiling in the meeting space for a couple of reasons. It's going to make running cabling and mounting things a lot easier. And it's also going to help us with the energy costs of having less airspace. Um, so if any, anybody doesn't have any objections, I'd like to get some quotes to put in drop ceiling in the main meeting room. Absolutely. This is, this is awesome. I'm so glad you're a tech person because I am not. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll, I'll give you guys a little more. This is just kind of my primer that I was putting together for myself on it, but I've got some, some notes. Um, I've got a kind of a rough diagram of where mic placement, cam placement, and stuff is, as well as some notes around, like, putting in a, a simple chaseway above the drop ceiling so that we can toss the wires that are going to be needed for, for power and for signal. Um, this is what the little projector looks like. It's about yay big. And if you mount it to the ceiling, it's, it's again, really close to the wall. So it would be up and, and high. The board of supervisors could walk in behind that table, sit down, move around, wave your arms, and you would not interfere with the projection. Um, other than that, like I'll get a kind of a rough build of materials together for what we would need to do. And uh, hopefully within the near future, the whole COVID thing will dial down enough that we can actually start having in-person meetings again. Um, but it'd be good to have that done before that happens so that it's a nice new quality experience when we return to it rather than like us having the stuff torn apart, putting in drop ceiling or wiring or anything like that during, <laughs> during a meeting. Um, Okay, uh, that's the last item for comment that I had. Irene, uh, I know you had one item for comment listed. Yes, um, we purchased new checks for all the accounts because the old checks on some of the other accounts just didn't feed in properly. Um, Sue and I were talking about it. The old checks need to be destroyed. Do we need to make a motion around that? Just to be safe, let's. Okay. Um, do you want to make the motion? like to make a motion to destroy the old checks that don't feed correctly into the printer or our current checking accounts. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Any other comments, Irene? Um, no, I guess it's more towards uh, Jim. Uh, Jim, anytime, if you'd like to uh, start taking a look around the playground, I'd like to work with you a little bit more about uh, uh, helping the Marion Township Community Association uh, get some quotes and start getting the ball rolling on yeah. that. I, I haven't heard anything from them. I mean, I think that if they were going to submit something for a grant, it would have to be done, I want to say, by April 1st. Was that the case last year, Peter, if I recall? Yeah, I want to say it was the first first week yeah. of April. Might have been the yeah. first, might have been like the third or the fourth or something like that. But yeah, it's it's right around the corner. Yeah, and I know last year, Don just like came to us like, like two or three days before the grant needed to be submitted. So... Um, I'm not too sure what they have or haven't done with that, but Jim, if you and I can go shopping <laughs> um, and, okay. and you know, work on some quotes and, and, and just get some ideas, you know, whether the cost is high or low, um, I want to do our best to help out that association, really get the playground moving. It would be nice to get that area revitalized. And once COVID is over, it would be a wonderful surprise, so to speak, for the community, because it's not going to really be a surprise if people see work getting done. But be a wonderful thing to kind of come out of COVID with a fresh area for children and families to gather. So, so food for thought on that. I know I had you had mentioned something similar, Irene. And I had kind of echoed that sentiment pr prior. If we get something figured out, because they have that nice design that McCarthy Engineering had given, let's tentatively build a, a, a large sum into the budget for next year for playground revitalization. If the township is willing to contribute 20,000 and other people in the community are willing to contribute, or they give letters of commitment for a thousand here, 2000 here, a thousand here, 500 here, that'll add up, especially if the community association is able to contribute like $10,000 as well. The way those grants work is you get $20,000 right away 
and then you get a 50% match. So if we brought $40,000 to the table, we'd have 20 plus another 20, we'd have $80,000 worth of playground to go. So, so I think last year we did not give any funds towards the playground. I think it was last year for 2020, excuse me, there was $10,000 budgeted. Mm -hmm. I believe, Dan, if, if you if you recall at all, there was another $10,000 budgeted for this year. So there's $20,000 there. I recall the first year that I worked with the association, there was something like just shy of $9,000 that they had. Um, plus there was the whole um, Bethel Township, uh, Bethel Tulpe, uh and our township that we, they worked on that particular project. So we have that plus the write-up that you did, I added some more to it. So I just want to beef everything up, but we need some good cold, hard numbers. And mm -hmm. we need, to, again, another thing for me, I need to go out physically look at the space and we need to get people out there to give us an idea of what can be done. Once we have a good idea over numbers, it's it's just coming back to the association saying, hey, you know, this is what we could do and help them along. I work with a non-for-profit before. Uh, Jim, did you ever work with any non-for-profits in the past? Yes, I have. Okay. I'll, I'll contact those couple of companies again uh, that couldn't come out as a result of COVID right, last, right, last right. spring. Right. Spring, but yeah. We'll get to see if, if they're able to. Okay. I know, like the community association, I had talked about it. Uh, we could we could help them get out letters to the community, even if residents want to donate five dollars. If you get everyone to donate five dollars, it goes a long way. And some of our local businesses, you know, etc. So, you know, again, I'd like to help them along and see what we could do to to really make Marion Township the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I had suggested are fundraising. Yep. You do a thing where you send letters out to the community where if you'd like to buy a, a brick, we'd have to figure out like what the cost of getting the like engraved bricks are, but buy a brick. It's $500 and you get a brick with whatever your message is, your name, or you want to put something short under a certain number of characters on it. That would be a great way to do that. Or if you want to buy a bench, we'll make sure that the bench gets engraved with whatever message that you want on it for a certain amount. Kind of put together like yeah. a, a pledge guide, if you will. Yep. And then ask businesses in the area for letter a letter of commitment. Like, are you interested in contributing to the project? The township's going to be putting forth X number of dollars. Uh, we're looking to fundraise roughly around X number of dollars more. We have other community commitment of whatever. We're able to get matching grants. Are you able to contribute $500, $1,000, $2,000 to help revitalize the, the community playground? Yeah. But I think if we get enough of that going... And we actually have a lot of that documented. That's going to make our grant application that much better. It's going to clearly illustrate uh, ability to fund on our part. And it's going to make us that much more likely to get any of the matching funding via the grant. Yeah. I mean, another a, a really big focus is making sure that that park is ADA accessible. Which yes. With current state, it, it's not. And we want every child to feel welcome there. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. Okay. Jim, do you have any comments? Nothing additional. Okay. Thank you. Sue? Nothing. Okay. Very good. Peter? Yes, sir. Uh, we have a resident here in Stonecroft Village that would like to stop by the township office and drop off some office supplies. They'd like to donate them. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sue or, <laughs> Sue or Irene, is that a situation where if they give you a call ahead of time that they could connect with you during the week and drop stuff off? Absolutely. Just let okay. me know when they're coming. Okay. So, Dan, if you can have them call the, the main township office number, just let Sue know when they're going to be there and she'll she'll meet up with them. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. And also, please pass along our, our heartfelt thanks for the, the donation. Well, he's sitting right next to me, so he ah, heard well, you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is 10.13 a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the weekend and uh, stay safe. If we don't talk between now and then, I'll hopefully see everyone's smiling faces on Thursday night. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Goodbye.